Do you teach using live or recorded content and you're looking for more ways to support your audience? Well, today we are gonna talk about using interactive training demo software, in this case, Supa Demo, for how you can support live presentations or your recorded or even written content. Now I'm gonna show you one I've already made and I made it public so you can actually go and test it out yourself. We're also gonna make one together and show you how quickly you can put one together. And I'm gonna share some ideas because off the top of your head, you might not be connecting how you could use this, but I think there's a lot of opportunities, especially if you are an online educator like myself. Now, typically when we think of interactive training demo software, we think of companies that are teaching users how to use their product. And because of that, most demo software is priced for companies. But a couple of months ago, I started using Super Demo, and if we take a look here at the pricing, this is something I can actually afford as a solo entrepreneur. So mostly I have been using this to help build content. Right now I've been working for the last couple of months on a course for grad students at a local university. And I have found making these demos is a really nice way to support learning because people can go through at a self-paced, they're not always having to pause a video and rewind. So I thought for a demo for you today, I would show something I've already taught on YouTube. We are going to look at an example of using Canva Live. This is something I walked through how to do it in a video, but this would be a really nice way to supplement that teaching. So if we take a look at this and you can access it, the link is in the description, it will take you to the page. It will show you the browser because I recorded the browser and it takes you through the different steps. So as you go through the steps, you can actually customize where this little hotspot lives. You can customize the instructions and you can decide what it is you wanna walk people through. Now in this example, because Canva Live has multiple steps to prepare and then launch a presentation, I thought this would be a good example. And I think I will actually attach this to the Canva Live video. So in this way, I am taking something I already taught live, but then I have another way for people to look at it because some people would much rather go through at their own pace than if they were to just watch a video, pause, go back and try and figure out what they missed. So I really like that. They can also go back a session. So here, this has 16 total steps. And as you walk through, you can see the different ones. And I try to do just enough so someone can do this for the first time. When you are done and get to the last thing, you have an option to put up a final page and also at the start if you want to put up a pre-page. Pre so this is something you can actually go and try yourself and see. So that's what one looks like when it's actually done. But there is a chance that you're asking the question, okay, Kat, but you actually teach software and tutorials. This makes sense. Maybe I don't teach that. Maybe I have a totally different subject area. Well, let's imagine that you have a live workshop coming up. Here are some ways I could see you using this. One, maybe pre-session after someone registers, you send them instructions. And for people who don't know how to access resources or duplicate a template, even something as simple as, oh, just copy this Google doc. Not everyone has done that. So if you can have a simple demo that actually shows the steps to do that, it will help everybody make sure they're on the same page. And if you are using new software that not everyone attending your session is familiar with, then you can absolutely teach them in advance so they show up feeling more confident and comfortable. Now during the session, I probably wouldn't use it as much, but let's say you're using a new web conferencing software and you wanna show people how to interact and use the platform. You could send it in advance, but we all know not everyone looks at what you send them in advance. So at the start, you could share in the chat for anyone who's new to this, here's a little website that shows you how to use it. And then maybe you keep it short, a couple of steps. Also, if you're running an activity, let's say that you are asking everyone to contribute to a collaborative whiteboard software. Well, not everyone has necessarily used that tool. So you could have a link you provide to everyone in the session and say, if you haven't used this tool before, you can see in a couple of steps how to use it. So that way a person doesn't just sit back and not participate, they have the option to learn how to do it. And then after the session, well, you could share people, how do you actually access the recording of the session? Or is there something you covered live that you want to recap, like the Canva example? Or how do I actually get to other resources? If you are someone who runs a course, you could even 
welcome them once they register and give them a link to a demo that shows how do you log in and how do you get around the course software. So there are a ton of possibilities. So now let's see an example. And in this case, we're gonna go over to this browser where I have a sessions meeting running. If you're not familiar, I did a recent YouTube video on sessions. And this is an alternative to Google Meet, Zoom, Teams, etc. Now there's a very good chance that because at the moment it is a bit newer, if I invite someone to this meeting, they don't know how to navigate it. So what I could do is record a demo. So let's actually record one together. And now you can see I've got extensions. And up here in my browser extensions, I have one for Supa demo. And so if I click on this, it asks if I wanna start a new recording, I do. Now it's gonna to prompt to just make sure, am I sharing the browser or am I recording another application that is active on my computer? So I'm gonna pick my browser and click share. It goes back to the page I was on. It's got a little countdown, but it's only recording our clicks. So I wanna keep this simple. And I am going to say that if they want to see an agenda, although the agenda is not showing right now, <laughs> I can say, click here to open the agenda. And then I can say, click this area is where all of your controls are. Maybe I want to teach them. If they click on this, it will open the chat. And if they click here on the Q&A, it will open the Q&A to submit a question. And maybe finally I go up here and I just click X to show how to close that sidebar. Keeping it really simple, up here you can see there's a little recording dot and it says five, meaning I've got five clicks that were recorded. So if I click here to end it, I can confirm that I wanna stop the recording and it is going to create my demo. So now I have the demo and this is where you can start to edit. So here I can click edit and I have five different clicks that were recorded. And this first one, obviously it's not click on you. In the example, I would have an agenda, but I could say click to open agenda. And actually it could be to open slash hide agenda. And then, and then I can pick where do I want this? Maybe I want this to position on the top, save. The next one I go to, I can say for this edit, maybe access meeting controls. And I want this to be on top, save. And the next one we have open chat. So I can just edit. So you can see how easy it is to say what you actually want it to be. And with these, I could say, go to the right, to the left, etc. And finally for this one or the second final, I want to say open Q and A. And then the final one is to close the sidebar and I can say close sidebar. Now there are some other options for this and you can edit the image. So if I wanted to open this image and I wanted to redact something, maybe the meeting information was there, I can use the redact and maybe blur out something I don't want people to see. I don't know if this depends on the free or the paid plan. And when I'm done, I can click done and it has now edited that, that photo. You do have to do this, I think, for every photo because I think each one is an individual photo. You can also customize other things, like do you want this to be partially transparent? And you can change these settings here. Also, when you're on the hotbar, if I close this and I open it, I can change the color. Now I can either change the color just for this one hotspot or I could change it for all. So if I said I'd actually like it to be this color, or maybe let's pick this purple, and then I say save, it's going to say, do you want all of them? And I can apply it to all, so now there's a different purple. If I want to share this, I've got the link to share it here. You can also embed this into a website, into a Notion page, into a course software. You can export as a video or a GIF and you can share to social. So this is how it looks. And if I'll give you an example here, in MySpace here, I've got a folder which you can organize them. So this is an example of all the ones that I've created to help with the course that I've been building. In this case, it's specific to Notion. So it's a great use case for demos, but there are so many ways that you can use this software. And I want you to think outside the box. Is there something someone's not familiar with and would an interactive demo help? Because honestly, I think this could help you to run more professional, engaging and seamless live presentations.